I'm going to try my best to do as much justice to this talk as possible. Um, our engineering team are truly some of the best in the industry. Um, we have in the company over 70 PhDs working on consensus, cryptography, um, all sorts of really interesting um, bleed, bleeding edge stuff, all the way to storage that we think is going to change the world for Web3 and just the web as a whole. Um, one of the things we've been working on is how do we make um, transaction finality for shared objects as fast as single writer objects. Right now, I was explaining before that to transact on SWE, to do, you know, sending money to someone, sending a token to someone, sending an NFT asset to somebody, all that happens instantly right now in half a second. What we want is when you have a transaction that's touching a DEX or any, uh, anything that requires coordination, how do we get that to instant finality as well, as, as fast as we have for um, single writer objects? Mr. SETI is what we've called it. Mr. SETI is the world's fastest consensus engine. Um, people talk about throughput all the time. Throughput is interesting. We've already solved that problem by having a blockchain that has unlimited throughput. But what matters is how do we go to instant finality? Latency is the hardest problem to solve beyond throughput. In this example, we're just showing you what's happening in SWE right now. From when you approve a transaction to when it's final, it's taking about two seconds. That's actually really good. It's faster than all the other blockchains today. It's actually really good. But I think that's actually, from a user perspective, can we go better than that, right? It'll be amazing if that click is effectively instant. As I click the button, the finality is instant. I, as a user, would be much more pleased. There's some research that's been undergone that every second that you have in latency for a user experience, it makes it a 19% worse experience for the user. So users are going to be more and more upset the worse it gets. That's why many people are, un, un, um, are, are not happy about blockchain performance today. But we're talking about two seconds being the industry leading today. We're not happy. We want to go way below that. We think half a second should ultimately be the goal. Now, there are different types of transaction types on SWE, as I mentioned. There is um, the single owner objects. That's just an asset transfer. Um, imagine a game making moves in a video game. You do that singly, and that's, that's happening instantly. Um, NFT transfers, all these things happen on SWE within 500 milliseconds. So when you click a button, it's finalized within half a second. But what about the other transaction types? We're talking about shared object transaction types. The, you're talking about marketplace transactions. You're talking about um, collaborative games. If you have multiplayer games, I have two or three people playing a game or more. These things right now are taking between one and a half to two seconds to finalize on SWE. Um, even you know, public accessible counters, if you and I need to execute a transaction that requires an increment, increment of a counter at any given time, right now that requires coordination. It goes through consensus. So a bit of discussion about SWE speed. The most important thing to think about is there are multiple components of this. Right? There is block time, transaction finality, and settlement finality. These are the multitude of things that's involved. How fast can you propagate blocks? How fast can you get transaction finality? And how fast can you get settlement finality? Most people try to give you optimistic numbers, but those are great because when the world goes well, but most times the world doesn't go so well. So what are the, what are the real numbers for finality from a user perspective? When I've clicked a button, and I know it can never be reversed. So if you think about what matters, it's the protocol efficiency, which is the number of round trips across, uh, across the internet to the performance of a node. Consensus is the most expensive part. Execution is very low cost. Execution, 10 milliseconds is possible. You can get maybe 20, 30. But realistically, on SWE, execution is happening within 10, 20 milliseconds, very, very fast in parallel. Consensus, as we say right now, is taken above a second and a half to, d to do, which is how do we get more efficient consensus mechanisms on SWE. This is how SWE works today. This is the life cycle of a transaction on SWE. You would create a transaction. Once you create a transaction, it would get, if effectively, you collect a set of certificates. Once you have a set of certificates, it would go for checks and verification. Once it's been verified, it would go to ordering. Once it's been ordered, it would go effectively to execution. Once it's been executed, it's final. So multiple steps required, which is what's taking up to two seconds today. 
So there are multiple complicated processes that have to happen for a transaction to be final. If you see underneath, there's something called fast path. In a fast path, which is a single object um, transactions I talked about before, you bypass consensus. It's not needed. So from when you verify a transaction, you can go straight to executing it. And that's happening in 500 milliseconds. Can we get performance almost as fast, if not faster, than what we have today for single writer objects as we have for consensus objects? That has been the task given to our monumental engineering team today. So now you know the anatomy of a three transaction. Let's talk about how it works for shared objects. First, transaction is uh, submitted. It's processed. I get a certificate. Once I have a certificate, it goes straight to the node for validation. Once it's been validated, it goes to consensus for ordering. Once it's been ordered, it goes to execution. Once it's executed, we basically, there's four RT, R round trips required for that, and ultimately, it's finalized. So you have something about, you have up to about um, four and a half RTTs involved in, in that whole process. But SWE is a very complicated system. What can we do to simplify that, and what can we do to get even more performance out of the system? Today, there, if I want to draw your attention of two types of consensus algorithms, there are linear-based consensus algorithms, where you submit, you create a block. Once you've created a block, you forward it, you, send it, you, you refer to the previous transactions in the block. You, you basically have another leader propose a, um, um, the block. You refer to that, and you keep going over and over and over again. The bottleneck is by the, the you can get bottlenecked by a leader that's got poor bandwidth. You basically lead, if the leader fails, you have low throughput as a result, which is a problem with most consensus-based systems today. And low latency, it's about two to three round trips. Very, very low, very, very um, low latency, but very susceptible to failure. DAG systems, which is what we have today, not bull shark on SWE today on SWE, is a DAG-based system, much more complicated. But you can see that ultimately what we're doing is every single round, we have multiple gossips happening where blocks have been proposed in parallel over and over and over again. Ultimately, the benefit is you have, it, you have more latency, but what you have is you're not susceptible to bad um, performance of a single leader. And over time, you also have, um, you know, it's, it's a more lightweight algorithm from our perspective of implementation, from our perspective. But at the same time, you have stronger guarantees as well. So we think a DAG-based system is the way to go. It's, SWE uses a DAG-based system today. But the, the, the downside of a DAG-based system we have is actually an increase in latency. So again, traditional, leader-driven. Um, it's linear communication, low latency, two to three round trips. And it's, of course, leader, the con is a leader is a bottleneck in a, in a, in a, in a protocol. Our DAG-based consensus is effectively way faster. Like, it's, you can get more throughput out of it as a result. But again, as I touched on, we think, you know, we want to get better in terms of latency and finality. So what is Mr. Seti? Mr. Seti is, an ambi is our ambition to effectively make a DAG-based consensus protocol have as low, as, uh, um, um, as low latency as you get with a linear-based system. And we're able to achieve that. Our consensus 1.0 today is final at 1.5 round trips. It, it effectively, for a single round, it takes about one to five round trips, sorry. With Mr. Seti, consensus 2.0, it's half a round trip to create a, a single block. In fact, the block time of Mr. Seti is 80 milliseconds. It is the lowest block, block time of any blockchain in history. 80 millisecond block times as a result of 0.5% round trips to create a single round in Mr. Seti. It is a game changer. It is an industry leading mechanism. And the reason we can do that is we do not have to verify the DAG as part of progressing the, the blocks. So the difference is, as I mentioned, consensus 1.0 require the verification of a DAG. So every time you receive a DAG, it has to go through a certification. With consensus 2.0, it, it requires an unverified DAG. So after about um, two to three rounds, you've got full verification that transaction is final. Ultimately, it's, it, the commits are done in pipeline in parallel. And multi-leaders, you have multiple leaders. If one leader is out, it doesn't matter. The chain doesn't notice. It keeps going on. It, it can take care of, um, of downtime. Um, 
It can take care of bad leaders. It can take care of people who have very low performance. It's not affected by the worst leader like most protocols are. But ultimately, what it gives us is what we're seeing, an 80% reduction in latency today. This is what we have in testnet. You could see this is Narwhal and Bullshark that we're running right now that is showing close to two seconds. And as soon as Mississippi got turned on, it cuts down to 200, 397 milliseconds. By the time this hits production, this will be the fastest chain for latency in the world. SWE, we already believe it's there, but we think Mr. Seti just sets a whole new bar for what users should experience in a global decentralized network. Another benefit as well is P50 shared object latency. What does that mean? 50% of users, which is going to be the average set of users that engage with SWE, will see finality, end-to-end -end finality, from when you click a button to when it's final, in 690 milliseconds. That is insane. Before the website is loaded, your transaction is final. That means the amount of use cases you can engage with is broader. We just gave you a card, this card that you scanned. Today, when you put it on your phone and you clicked on Approve, it took about two seconds to finalize. That is to do with now on Bullshark. In a few months, once it's live in mainnet, when you do that same scan, when you click on Approve, it will be instantly final in your account. So that is what it means about building the best user experience for users over and over again. It's thinking about all the way from when a user submits a transaction to when the chain gives you feedback that it's final. This is end-to-end -end latency. Optimistic latency is a lot lower, way lower. Block times of 80 milliseconds, true end-to-end -end finality of 690 milliseconds, but ultimately the user will have the best experience that they can ever have of any chain. Not, having a, not, not gonna see failed transactions, not going to see latency spike up in times when a network is busy, not going to see a maximum throughput. Ultimately, the chain, chain, um, the chain scales uh, infinitely. We'll be releasing, we released a paper already called Pilotfish, and Pilotfish was able to show that when you added eight times more machines to SWE, you got eight times the throughput. So there is no maximum throughput. Separately, the latency is constant. No matter how many transactions you throw at SWE and the amount of um, uh, machines you throw in the network, the latency always stays the same, and the throughput goes higher and higher. This is how internet scale infrastructure should be built. And one thing we're going to be working on is effectively cutting down the latency again for single writer objects. Right now, I explained that there are 500 milliseconds. By the time we merge the code base between um, the ingestion phase and also the verification phase, we think we'll be able to get latency for single writer objects end to end down to 300 milliseconds. So you have 300 milliseconds for single writer objects, end to end finality, and 690 milliseconds end to end finality for shared objects. In fact, we've seen as low as 500 milliseconds for shared objects in testnet as well. So we think we'll have low sub second finality for all transactions in SWE over, 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 over and over again. Um, another thing of Pilotfish is we think we can actually get a scenario where some transactions that need consensus can be finalized without consensus. That's going into too much detail, but there are people who have way more PhDs on me on this topic that can talk about that in detail. But we think that's going to be another variation of what we can do here. So to summarize, Mr. Seti, 80% latency reduction. Consensus has gone down from 1.9 seconds to 390 milliseconds. Settlement end-to-end end end from 2.2 seconds to 690 milliseconds. Um, it will be in mainnet by July 2024. In fact, it's running in testnet now. The numbers are already published. It's running the same code base, the same validator setup across the globe, and we're seeing remarkable results. And we, we want to turn it on in mainnet in July. And we're going to be integrating um, um, congestion um, phase with Mr. Seti in uh, basically uh, H2 2024. So there'll be a lot of more upgrades coming to SWE as a whole, but ultimately we think DeFi protocols are going to see an amazing improvement in user experience. It's already industry leading, but I think it's going to take it to a whole new level. But overall, we think, more, most importantly, the user experience across SWE will be just unmatched, unrivaled to what any other ecosystem has made possible. This is all possible by having world-renowned researchers in the team. Everything we have is peer-reviewed and has some of the most uh, amazing scientific reviews uh, um, in the world that have looked at it. It's all verified. All, uh, it's, it's not just code that goes out with, with uh, all sorts of caveats, but these are things that you should read up on yourself. We actually have some universities 
they're going to be teaching Mr. Seti as a course in the, in the university as a result, because for the first time, they can actually understand a proper Byzantine fault tolerant protocol with a DAG based system in a way that it's easy to actually internalize. So we believe we're making a lot of great changes for the world, but more importantly, we think we're building the best developer platform for Web3 as a whole. Um, if you want more information on Mr. Seti, do scan this QR code. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. But ultimately, this is a summary of the elements of Mr. Seti. It's a multi-leader DAG-based consensus protocol. It has industry-leading latency, um, lowest latency that's ever been found in any protocol. It's orders of magnitude faster than what exists today. And it's supported by, it's going to be supported by Pilotfish, effectively unlimited throughput-based system. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.